just bottom line, mistakes happen. We're all humans and it's okay if we make mistakes. But then once you, once you are able to use that, I mean, for me, once I'm able to calm myself down with that, then it's like, let's be very rational. Let's think about what I need to do to, I know my goal at this competition. So what can I do exactly to make this, to make each element in this competition successful? Like for instance, I'm going to LUTs. What do I need to do to make that LUTs successful? How much speed do I need? What direction do I need to go in? Where should I be looking? Where can I keep myself not distracted by like seeing a color or seeing a light or seeing a face that I like recognize that'll keep me, get me distracted a little bit. So then, then it's just like be very specific about like where where I want to be mentally in that frame of moment. Okay, now I know what to do in lots. Okay, now let's move to the flip. What do I need to do for a flip? Where do I need to set my pattern? And then be very technical. And I find that generally speaking with the, within the competition, if I can focus on two, two to three things per jump, like for instance, lots direction, timing, you know, pulling through with my left shoulder, something like that. Like that was very arbitrary. So like that's specific to the jump. But like think about three things. Um, it'll keep your mind locked in. So consistency is, is difficult. Even now, you know, I know myself and all the skaters that I've competed against are top level skaters um, still struggle with consistency. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not something that, you know, you'll magically become super consistent. Um, I think there's two components to consistency. One is like in training, how, <clears throat> how you utilize your reps. I think that's extremely important. Um, for me, like, obviously I'm, I'm working on quads. I'm working on, you know, making my quads consistent, but the amount of times that I spend on doubles and triples even now is like well more than I even attempt quads. So it's, I think it's really important, especially as you start improving and start doing, you know, bigger and bigger jumps. Like one, keep in mind that big jumps do take a lot out of your body. You know, the amount of, uh, amount of torque rotation power that you need to generate to do a, a bigger jump, even triple triples, even, you know, just triples in general from doubles to triples is significantly more than from doubles uh, from doing doubles. So just keep that in mind um, and slowly progress into how many, how many repetitions you do. You know, uh, my rule, my rule of thumb with, with uh, improve, increases in, in volume uh, is that you can never max over 20% of what you did the previous week. So for instance, let's say you did 10 jumps the previous week, don't do more than 12 the next week. Um, always do 20% increments um, because if you do more than that, it's really easy for your body um, to, to get hurt basically. Um, so as for consistency, you know, make sure that you really emphasize getting very consistent with the, the jumps before. So if you're working triples, make sure doubles are super, super solid. Every single double that you attempt, because it's something that's easier, something that you've done more often, know that you have to do specific things and achieve that every single time you do that double. You know, for me, when I'm working on, let's say triple sal, like every single triple sal that I do, I have to make sure that my arms are in the right position, my body's in the right position. And it's still a trial and error thing too. So like, obviously like you're trying to recreate the same thing, but at the same time, if you know something's not working, do a minor adjustment, see if that works, change one variable at a time, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, and then repeat that, repeat that, repeat that, repeat that um, until you get so comfortable with, until you get so comfortable with it, knowing that like, no matter what I do, no matter how much speed, no matter who who's in my way, no matter what the music is telling me, no matter if I'm stressed, I can know I can do this specific action. Um, and then once that happens, then you can start moving that into triples and moving it or if you're from singles to doubles, doubles to triples, triples to quads. And then that consistency will remain. So it's a lot of like, just constant reps with within the within the, the lesser category of jump um, and then the second part is obviously just mental training you know there's a lot of a lot of components uh, to being consistent in competition and I think being in co uh, consistent in competition is more related to like how you're able to mentally prepare yourself how you can make yourself calm how you can make yourself to not you know work through your mind so quickly like slow your body down slow slow your mind down um, but that just takes time and practice to you know figure out learn I don't I, I would highly recommend working with um, a sports psych, um, they give you a lot of, uh, techniques to, to breathe, to, um, to keep yourself calm, to keep yourself motivated as well. So, um, a lot of that stuff comes down to your mind when it comes to competition, make friends in the sport, you know, make, uh, you know, reach out to people and, and hear how they're thinking, hear how, get, get advice from other, other people, um, and, and just be open to all your competitors and all your training mates. Like they're all working very, very hard to achieve basically the same goal, you know? So it's really, um, really important to, to understand and, and recognize the amount of work that other people are putting in and, and respect, respect that. Um, and I think that that fosters a very healthy training environment. So everyone's, you know, striving towards goals, but not, and being competitive toward, towards one another, we're trying to push each other forward, but we're not trying to bring each other back, you know? So it's very important to have that sort of, sort of, to foster that sort of environment. And that starts with every single individual, you know, it's not just a coach that has to foster that. It's like each skater themselves has to try to avoid the drama and just focus on, you know, trying to improve themselves in the sport and trying to improve it and help other people improve as well. Um, because at the end of the day, you guys are all part of like one skating community and that's really important. I think before I even start competing, you know, I'll look up at this at the ceiling and just like 
take in like that moment like that's so sick like every time that you get to compete no matter if it's a small competition or a big competition like that's so cool you know like that's what we train for that's why we're doing this every single day that's why we go to the ring that's why we do all this research and spend so much of our time and energy uh, to get these moments to compete um and so if you're able to take a step back and just recognize how lucky how fortunate how cool it is that you're there in that moment uh being able to do this you know not many people are, are able to do what you do um, you guys are all exceptional skaters already so like to be able to to recognize that and be like, I'm really good at what I do. I'm very confident in like, you know, happy that I'm here uh, because my skills have provided me the opportunity to do this. Um, it helps just keep you like, you know, in a more level playing field rather than being so like, ah, oh, shoot, what if I made a, make a mistake, you know? Like, and if you make a mistake, like who cares, you know? Like it, again, like the world will keep moving. So uh, recognize that, you know, you're just lucky to be in this moment and if things happen well, you know, embrace that. If things don't happen well, that's okay, move on. Um, and so that's kind of how I see it, keep myself grounded throughout.